Man, I'm bored. We need to do something. Road trip. Canada. I'm ready. I'm ready. Thought we'd leave it. Six o'clock this morning. Stopper time. 825. 825. We're just leaving Salina. Stop tonight. I hop for breakfast. Let's meet the crew. There's Stoffer. There's Wiley Coyote. Super genius. Wiley's along because one, he's a super genius. Two, he's been around the world with me and he should go on this trip too. And I'm Tim. Let's go to Canada. Okay, we're almost to Nebraska. Suppose we should point out some of the amenities. We brought our XM radio along, 101 channels off of a satellite. We're listening to each and every channel for five minutes. I don't care how horrible music is. Right now we're on Hank's place, listening to some country. That's horrible. And it's horrible. But, oh, it's five Thumbs minutes. Up. Time to change. Next channel. Next channel is Bluegrass. Just deliverance. And I think it's going to get worse as time goes along. There's everything on this satellite. Nebraska. Didn't hardly see the sign, but that means we're a quarter of the way there. <laughs> yeah, right. Stopper cam. Look, okay, has enough of that. Okay, first stop was at a convenience store for the wheels for you. Second stop. Oh heck, that's no good. Let's go to the next one. An Oregon Trail Monument. Okay, it's back on the road. Stoffer's playing with buttons. <laughs> Look both ways. Okay. It's a rental. <laughs> Nebraska. Flatter than a pancake. The chicken. LA Kiss is where we're at. This is an LA radio station, KISS. Let's get my advertisement in right there. The power of green. That's right. If you build it, he will come. <laughs> back to I-80. We uh, forgot to take a right turn there so, or something. Yeah, the navigator failed at that particular Some direction. of our navigational equipment had given us some erroneous readings today. <clears throat> Little side detour here. Stoffer's busy falling in love with a truck. Explorers are not very good at burnouts. Oh, no. Yeah, they are. Nope, 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 nope. Can't do that. Nope. Oh. Yeah, sure, you had to go change the channel. Now we're stuck with this for five minutes. 
So now the question becomes, will 680 North take us around town and save us a few minutes, or will we get hopelessly lost? We left the map at home, so we don't know. Let's find out. It's noon, and we're in Omaha. Kansas. And what are your citizenships? United States. Is this the Ohio license plate? Yes, it is. Yeah. Rental car. Oh, okay. Hertz. <laughs> dinner in Canada. How long would you stay? Long enough to eat long dinner enough to eat in Canada. Canada. <laughs> it, uh, where are you Can you suggest right a place? Sir, one second, is that on? Yeah, do I need to turn it off? Yeah, you can. Okay. Well, that's the end of our footage, but not the end of our story. Turns out an international border crossing is a fairly interesting place, although they don't have much of a sense of humor. After the border guard made us turn off the camera, she gave us some paperwork and directed us inside. There we found several booths, much like you'd find in a bank. Behind the counter were about a half a dozen Canadian border guards, all decked out in bulletproof vests. One of them was pacing back and forth behind the rest. Apparently he was the one in charge. We went to the first booth where they checked our ID, punched a bunch of keys into the computer, and then asked us who we were, where we were from, and what was the nature of our visit to Canada. To which we replied, we were from Kansas, and we came up for supper. He just looked at us like we were nuts. Then he directed us to another booth prominently marked immigration. Once we had taken our place in that line, we waited a few minutes, then were called up. The lady behind the counter took our IDs, again punched a bunch of keys into the computer, then asked again who we were, where we were from, and what was the nature of our visit to Canada. 
to which we again replied we were from Kansas and we came up for supper. She also looked at us like we were nuts. She continued her questioning, asking our occupations. I replied I was an engineer. Stoffer said he was a farmer. Through small talk, we learned that her husband and I were both in the power distribution business. He worked at a hydro plant 13 hours north of the border. Hmm. We drive 800 miles for supper. He regularly commutes 13 hours to work. Who's really the one that's nuts here? After a little more browbeating, she told us to take a seat. We later learned we were waiting for our FBI reports to come back. Shortly, she came out and called Stoffer into an interrogation room. Apparently, she was upset by some minor infraction somewhere in his distant past. I couldn't hear the conversation, but she was the only one yelling. If you see Stoffer on the street someday, ask him to tell you the story about what happened behind closed doors. When they emerged, we were handed our IDs. She says, I don't know who you idiots think you are, but get in your vehicle, turn around, and leave our country immediately. So we did. We left the Canadian Customs Stations, but we still had to navigate back through the U.S. Customs. Here we go again. They had us pull into this large garage, then exit the vehicle. We were directed over to a long stainless steel table where they had us empty our pockets, and then they gave us the same line of questioning. Apparently, they were okay with our story. They put us in another interrogation booth while they searched our vehicle. After a little while, one of the border guards came in, looked Stoffer straight in the eye, and says, Okay, what's with the sombrero and the rubber chicken? They had found our props. We told them we had them along in case something funny came up, and it just did. I think they saw the humor in it. At that point, they rushed us back into our vehicle and bid us farewell. Off here to my left, ladies and gentlemen. That would be the border of uh, Canada. Apparently, uh, Mr. Stopper has too many arrests to get in the country. <laughs> We're on our way home, rubber chicken and all. The rest of the trip was fairly uneventful. It was getting late, we were getting tired, and we had some 800 miles left to drive. So drive we did, with a stop in Fargo for supper. If you decide to go to Canada for supper, I suggest you have a better story than that ready for the border guards. Thanks for taking the trip with us.